Hi Gator Russo here with the Majestic Rider in the rain because what else are we doing? Training horses. Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about what we call the intermediate gates. These gates are the second speed of your horse. So like the first speed of most of the horses is a flat walk. Um, just know that it's a four beat gait and when you talk about all the different breeds and you hear about Amble, that's very similar to a rack, um, which is single, uh, similar to a single step, which is similar to the running walk. So the thing that gets confusing is all these different names and all these different uh, breeds that talk with their horses. What you need to know is that there are four beats and the beats, which are their hooves hitting the ground, like, you know, one, two, three, four, they're all separate with a space in between. So it gets a little confusing when people mention the step pace, which could also be an intermediate gait, um, because that's closer together. So instead of going one, two, three, four, it would be closer together. So it's one, two, three, four. Um, and that's closer to the pace. So in some horses, it's not always that smooth, although some it's very smooth. How do you know what your horse can do in all of this? They always like to talk when I'm talking. So if your horse, when he's loose, gates well, or he gates and then he trots, you're gonna have a horse that probably has more separated legs than the horse that just paces when he's loose. If your horse just paces when he loose, when he's loose, then you might get closer to a step pace. And as long as it's smooth, that's fine. Cause some of you are beginners with this and it's hard to get the perfect gait when you really don't know what it feels like or what you're doing. But just know when you're in the saddle and you're doing an intermediate gait, if it's a running walk, you'll get a little bit of a back and forth motion like that. If it's a fox trot, uh, you're gonna get a sensation where you're going up and down like this, but it's still smooth. You shouldn't be bouncing like this. Now, if your horse is doing a rack, an amble, a single foot, you're gonna get a little bit more motion like this, where you kind of go side to side, but it's still smooth and your butt's not bouncing. You're just kind of going, if you see me from the back, it's just side to side like that. And a horse's tail kind of goes like this in the back. So that's more amble or a rack or a single foot and it should be smooth. If you're getting a step pate, then you might be getting a little bit of a bump, but you think it's a smooth bump. But just know your horse could be smoother if you did work on it. But again, in the beginning, you're just trying to get somewhat smooth. There he's getting a little bit more pacey. Yep, and then look up as you go over that pole, keep going. <laughs> When you see the gate, usually you can recognize with your eye when it's a clear four beat gate. But if it's more a step pace, some people get confused with the step pace and the pace. Watch the rider, because sometimes the horse's feet are going so fast that you can't tell, but you can tell when you watch the rider. So if it looks like a pace, but you see the person going side to side, kind of quick like that, and the horse's legs are moving pretty fast, they're probably racking or doing an amble or a single step. If it looks like a pace and you see the person kind of going side to side, but it's a little bumpy side to side, so it's a little bit harder, 
they're doing a step pace. So you'll see more of a bump that you would like you would get with a foxtrot. So I've seen a lot of people that think they're foxtrotting and they're not, they're step pacing. It's funny to me, not to them. Um, so, because I like to correct and of course make it better. And if they're doing a hard pace, you'll usually see the person bumping up in the saddle, but it's bumping side to side. I can't even do it. If they're fox trotting, remember it's a soft bump. If they're doing a hard trot, they're gonna get a big bump like this. How can you tell which one it's doing? So when you put a phone up and videotape yourself. If the horse is fox trotting, you won't be able to post to it because again, it's a four beat gait. But if the horse is trotting, you'll be able to post. If they're pacing, you'll be able to post, but it will feel weird. It will feel side to side as you're standing up and down in the saddle, and then you know you're pacing. How do you get the four beat gait clearly separated, not doing the step pace? Take lots of work. It's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some patience. You might have to ride in the arena a lot. You might have to ride alone a lot. Because a lot of times on trail, people want to go slow and then they want to go fast, especially if their horse is well gated. They don't want to wait for you because you yell your pacing. So you got to ride with people that are either going to go slow enough that you can slowly work on your horse and get that speed up and keep it smooth, or you're going to have to ride by yourself and work on it. And I'm sorry, but that's the way it goes. So some, like when I'm working on my horses, I ride them all alone in the beginning. Work on their gates, get their gates really good before I, I start riding with other people. And then when we ride in groups, we go the speed that the horses can go. So of course, there's lots of great horses out there that gait really well and they can go super fast. If your horse is pacing, you cannot ride with them. Or you have to ask your friends, hey, go back. They always do this. They always want attention when I'm talking on the phone. They're just like dogs. And then they start messing with the door. You ask the people, will you go slow? I need, my horse is not gating fast enough. It's legs are, you know, are doing two beat instead of four beat. I want to get four beats. Would you mind just walking? And if they have a big walking horse, because they have huge strides, they might not be able to gate at all with you. They might just be able to walk. Same thing with fox trotters. Some of them have big strides. So they might have to just walk the whole time. You're trying to get your speed up, especially if your horse has a shorter stride. And matching a big strided horse with a small strided horse, you need a small strided horse that has a good gait because if you don't and it's a pacer this person's going to have to walk the whole time so that all comes into play and although you're like there's not a simple answer no there's not the only thing that other people do and this is why their horses can go so fast because they're actually doing the speed of a pace or the speed of a trot is that they put the heavy shoes on so you might see some people and they're flying but that horse is more on the pacey side or he paces when he's loose, but he has a heavy shoe on. So then he's getting that four beats and it's you know smooth, but it's because of the shoe. And so if your horse came with heavy shoes and you take them off, you might have a pacer or a trotter. Um, the ones that are pacey will have the heavy shoe in the front and the ones that are trotty will have the heavy shoe in the back. So that's why I always tell people when you first get your horse and it was gating well, Keep those shoes on, take pictures of its feet, take pictures of its shoes. If you change the shoes, keep those shoes. Because then if you have a problem, you can go back, you can see what weight it was, and then you can talk to your shoer about it. I don't use those things. I do slow, steady, patience, and get the horses to gait naturally, because it's gonna help them the rest of their life, versus somebody buys one with shoes and takes them off, and then the horse is pacing the rest of their life just because they didn't learn how to do it correctly. But I think it's up to the person what they want to do. You want to have a smooth horse. You don't want to be bouncing on his back. You want to have fun. And so, you know, what you do, you can do it naturally or you can do it with the weights. I have nothing to do, you know, I don't judge. People do what they want because we know people are always going to take shortcuts and get there. So those, now that I've blah, 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 I've talked a lot, are the intermediate gates. And then hopefully I'll show you on some horses what they are so you can see the difference. But just remember, if you can't see it, you can videotape it and then slow it down or watch the rider because the rider will show you what the horse is actually doing. So I've seen some people like watching Rockies and they go, oh my God, they're pacing. And I go, look at the rider. That rider is not moving at all. Those horses' feet are going so fast that you can't see the difference between the four beat and the pace 
and maybe he's not exactly doing the correct gait, like a, you know, a rack or amble, um, and he might be step pacing, that's why the legs are closer, but if he's smooth and they're happy, then so be it. Yep, so here you'll stay at a flat walk. A little bit faster. Yep. Yep, but keep his head down. See there? Down. See there, if you feel bouncy at all. All, then he's going towards the pace. So go around and we'll try it again. to kind of keep rocking them on their back end. So squeeze and relax on the rein, even though you're picking up speed, and then keep tapping them with your spurs, because usually the spurs help a little bit more. That's it, yep. Keep going. See how there's not as much head shake? Yeah. You want to try it one more time? Sure. Well, here, okay. we'll talk after, or do your rack one more time. Okay. So bring his head down, start getting your speed. That's good. Then a little tap with your spur, but half halt on the rein and sit back like you're sitting in a chair a little bit. That's good.